So this is a meeting of the Public Works Committee to discuss a change in the film permitting process. We'll start with introductions. So this is First District Councilor Joseph Carney, Councilor at Large Steve Thompson. I'm Councilor Lawrence Michael Green, and that's Council President Helen Hudson. So why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jake Dishaw. I'm the director of the Central Permit Office for the city. Good afternoon, Yolanda Johnson, Construction Development Coordinator. All right, so why don't you guys just kind of take us through, I guess you could start with what the existing process is, take us through what kind of necessitated this change, and then describe what the proposed change is. <coughs> sure. Um, prior to um, coming up with this idea for a film permit within the city of Syracuse, we essentially just used our existing liability waiver, which um, our liability waiver basically um, covers any any work that's happening in the right of way and most people associate that with actual physical construction but um, that's essentially what we've used um, to cover any requests for filming um, in our city right away uh, so basically we, we didn't have a process or an application um, for any film industry folks to use um, other than basically using our our liability waiver which didn't have specific questions um, in regards to um, what is, is contained in our, our draft of our film permit application that we're proposing. So um, appropriate staff got together and, and uh, Yolanda worked very closely with some folks in um, drafting a, a film permit application that basically reflects um, and is very similar to what the county has as a film permit application and uh, we, we use that as a, a guideline and a starting point and um, and came up with this application um, I just want to ask you because I hear you what you said about the county but I don't think I'm just gonna play devil's advocate but I don't think the county has the issue that we have especially when it comes to certain parts of the city because around that one area that they like to film, at any given time, I've actually had to call and get the police to come and move traffic so that people can get through. So there's a cost to us when we bring the police in to move the traffic. So what's, how much is the film permit? Um, let, let me try to, there's a couple of different aspects. I'll, I'll start and try to answer every every point of your question there um, I think there's we get some folks that do apply for a permit and we're aware of what they're doing and they're telling us you know what they're doing and then there's probably some other groups out there that you know just set up shop without you know maybe they're not aware that they need a permit or they're not sure what to do so they're just out there and maybe maybe you run into an issue because they, they don't even have a permit so there's two different types um, Folks from, um, we've got our vice president of film from Visit Syracuse in attendance here. They're really trying to collaborate with any local film industry folks that are in town, making sure that there's a standard and some, you know, things that they have to follow in order to start filming. So hopefully we'll get ahead of that game where there's not people, you know, coming into our city and using our right of ways without, you know, giving us notice and applying. Um, <clears throat> secondly, um, the police department special events. Um, reviewers are part of our permit application um, review process and any associated fees that would be incurred uh, on the city's behalf or by the by the police department would be reimbursed and, and paid by the applicant and that's covered in our application can, can you show me where it says police and fire and then sign off it doesn't exactly say police and fire but if you go to um, page five or under section four under compensation um, licensee further agrees to reimburse the city for any costs actually incurred by the city associated with this film permit. <laughs> right. I, I, I read the read it. I just some I mean the permits now that we have have locations for the um, administrator to sign off uh, so that they're aware that this is going to be going on in their location and so then, then it goes through the you know it may take too long sometimes but it goes through the process and it ends up back at one central location, but I didn't see anything like in this. Sure, so um, the central permit office would be the the submittal point for these applications and we would route them to the <coughs> reviewing departments and I can go through and list those, but the police department is certainly one of those. Um, <clears throat> formerly, uh, Paul Kluge was probably the lead for the review um, for that, but 
Uh, I believe he has a replacement. Yeah, um, I, no, I just would suggest that there's something on here that has, look, look, just as the other ones do, your legal advice or what? Uh, Councillor, the um, permit, when it does come out, would have the reviewing comments from all those who reviewed it, which would include police and fire from the IPS review and routing. So those, <coughs> those comments would be on there. Their sign-off would be noted on the final issue once it comes out of IPS on the liability waiver form. So how do they I'm get... I'm looking at um, Robin just to confirm since <laughs> she's the end point. How do they get that? How do they know that this is... It doesn't have a chain in it. So, Councillor, the permit is submitted to the Central Permit Office. They would input it into IPS, and then it would be routed through IPS like all other permits, and those listed departments in that chain would be then be listed there. So it's not on the permit, but it's in the IPS system. Okay. Is that correct, Robin? Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yeah, Robin St. Hilaire, DPW, if I need. Um, it, it, it's if we are issuing a liability waiver to a page permit into to the company <coughs> once they get the the permit once they're approved any comments from police and fire would go physically into the two page document or any page document either that or you know so they will get any comments that are made by the police and and fire if they're if they're included on that for any such reason and and transportation for that matter but I'm, as i'm understanding then the when they enter in that there there's an application for this permit mm -hmm. that the police the fire and everybody else get this make comments respond back yep. and then they'll be incorporated in here so yeah. there, there yes. doesn't need to be a designation for them any right. longer no. Okay. no and usually once everyone signs up if, if there's any sort of issue they do reach out to the the applicant uh, to try to resolve those issues before you know approval or denial and another thing too, the applicant actually signs off that they read the comments and then we issue the permit. Yep. Yep. Okay. So right now, I mean, the applicants are the, you know, the filmmakers directly are coming to the city, right, to do yep. this. So, I mean, just one of the thoughts I had was, you know, I mean, I think taking a step back, obviously we want to make sure citizens are safe and don't do anything, you know, that they shouldn't be doing that would put anyone at risk. We want to make sure city resources are covered, that we're, you know, our police are paid for and all the things that we need are covered. But we also, you know, it's it's good for the city. If people want to film here, it's good publicity. It's, you know, they spend money. We want that. So those are kind of like the holistic things that we want. Does it make sense to encourage people to go through the county and have the county kind of shepherd them through the city process so that their point of contact would be the county? The county could potentially help them fill out the form and make sure to kind of vet them and then have them, you know, kind of jointly come to you guys and say, okay, the county's gone through it. They've looked at it, you know, because a lot of times you're looking at people that are going to be filming outside more than one municipality. And I think that could be overwhelming for someone that's not from here. Sure. And I think um, Eric Vinal could speak to this probably more specifically, but this was built off of the county permit. Every municipality, every has a different sort of jurisdictional look at this. This covers our existing liability waiver process, which is what we do for folks working in the right of way. So that remains the same. What we've done is add on additional information that's specific to the type of use in the right of way. Um, I think, Eric, if you have anything to add about your process. Um, but that that would be um, his role with Visit Syracuse is to shepherd those folks across jurisdictional boundaries. Hey guys, um, I'm Eric Vinal. I'm uh, currently with Visit Syracuse. I was, was with Onondaga County for about five years um, doing the film. So when we refer to the county, um, now it's going to hopefully funnel through Visit Syracuse. Okay. Um, we're kind of going through a rebranding process right now. We met earlier and spoke that we'd love to be collaborative in all of this with the county, with the city, include you guys, the permitting via our website, and make sure we are going through one place so that I can direct the permits to the proper jurisdiction, the proper municipalities. Um, we don't want to waste anyone's time or make this any more complicated than it already is for people, and I think that's what this process will continue to do is with this new permit, which is just like the county's, um, will be an expedited process for everybody and eliminate as much confusion as we possibly can. So, I mean, I guess that um, that makes a lot of sense. So, but is it the intention going forward that if someone applies, you guys could set, you almost like forward it to Eric and he could make sure. It'll all yeah. come through me. Okay. 
first. I mean, so every, th every film that comes through, just so you guys know how this all works, um, my job is to basically get films to, uh, to Syracuse, TV shows, um, et cetera, to obviously have an economic impact on the area. Um, I play the liaison to the community and to municipalities. Um, my number one rule is to make sure that it works for the community before it works for the film. Um, the film is secondary in this. Um, the city, the county, our neighborhoods need to be protected first, and then the film hopefully gets what they want from that community. Um, but we are in a, in a stage now where we didn't really know where this was gonna be, and we're now on our almost 20th movie. It's bringing money in, jobs are being created. Um, we have two movies at Sundance this year. So the city will be out there, um, and business will start to come in a little bit more rapidly because of this. I think we're at a great time to talk about this process, and, and I, I can answer any questions you have. I'm all open for suggestions to make this work for, for the city and all of our community members. So yeah, and I, I think the question is like, so if someone were to come here and say they want to do something, but it's, you know, it's going to take multiple police officers, it's mm -hmm. going to take closing this, that they would be interfacing with you before they go to the city. So that way right. you can vet all those things. Before. Right. We want to come to you guys with a complete application. Perfect. Um, okay. If we have questions, of course, we know who to contact. Within there, I know people have changed roles and some people are here, some people aren't. Um, I'll probably need to be brought up to speed on who the best contacts are for specific questions. Um, but I'm happy to go through the permit office like we have in the past. We've communicated very well on certain things. Um, our world changes on an hourly basis um, from weather to actor availability to locations not working out and just maybe what a director might think and want to change the way we shoot that day. Um, I'm trying to this year to set that expectation uh, to a more realistic one where in the past we've done everything we can to get things done and now that's kind of become our little bit of Achilles heel where we get too much done and now everyone expects it. So um, this year we're hopefully uh, I'm setting it out there to be taken a little more seriously, if we want to shut down a road Monday morning, you can't call me on Sunday to make that happen. Um, we're doing this two weeks ahead of time. We know that it takes time to get these things done. Um, we're still all learning how this goes. You know, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. I think we all are, as long as we can figure it out together to make it work, I think that's, that's the goal. And I appreciate that because again, like you said, you're trying to make sure that everything lines up, but I have to ensure that when it's done where you have we have residential downtown sure. now, yeah. and so when you have folks living down there and they ha it's, they can't get through, that's I live downtown. I got to make problem. sure I got to get home too. So, so. You no, know, um, I I agree. We you know we um, and that's why when it comes to we try to shut down as as few roads as possible for what we need to do. So what we've done in the past traditionally is do what's called an ITC intermittent traffic control, where maybe we do a temporary lockup with our crews to stop traffic for 30 seconds while a scene gets shot, and then that traffic gets opened back up, so we're not rerouting traffic, not prohibiting people from going home, their kids getting off the bus, whatever it may be, um, and that's that community first mentality that I'm really trying to push the best that I can. So I guess my question would be, um, along with that, I mean, it seems like usually if they're going through, well, the film hub or Visit Syracuse now, that they're sort of crossing their T's, dotting their I's, but uh, what uh, what's the process now? What happens if maybe the situation, I, I know we had spoken before about there being traffic backup, having to call the police. What's the process now if there's someone caught that doesn't have that permit, right. that is filming, filming illegally, you know, how, how, what's the process with that right, uh, right now and how, does it change with this? That's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I, I would I would say that it could start with a police response, especially if it's affecting any traffic or, you know, disturbing anything uh, in, in our public right of way. Um, I, I don't know if beyond that if enforcement would fall under codes. I don't, I don't or see there being an issue with we want to be open for business, we want to be film friendly, but at the same time there needs to be a protocol that's followed and taken seriously. Um, in the past, you know, when we deal with student films, uh, SU has a lot of people filming on our streets and high schoolers want to do things. In the past, they haven't always had the proper insurance. Now Syracuse University is actually supplying them with insurance to shoot in our city streets and our county. Um, <coughs> If they aren't blocking a road, if they aren't blocking pedestrian traffic, vehicle traffic, if they're not affecting a business, they're gonna shoot quick and there are a couple people we've traditionally let them get their shot. If it's beyond that, I'd prefer that they go through the proper channels. And if it is a student, they need to get used to this anyway, because this is what's gonna happen in the real world. So let's get everybody used to how we're doing business with film, and um, this is a good start. 
Uh, I would just add in our conversation with uh, Deputy Chief Cecil, his comment was, now that we have an ordinance, that's something that we can enforce. So if you are filming without a permit, that is something that they could then cite. Okay. Um, so you know, it, it, it's the same with almost any of our liability waivers. It's a self-reporting system. Okay. Um, so similar to that. I just because look, I, I know with everything you guys have done, you film a lot over in Sedgwick, and so you know, it, it's always pretty smooth getting home or, or leaving. It's not really hasn't been an issue. But I know I've heard a lot of complaints, you know, from other counselors, from constituents in other areas that it has. But I don't think it's, I don't know that they've actually been films that, you know, have been coming from you guys, if that makes sense. If they go through my office, which they, again, should, you know, I, I deal more with the feature films that are, have multi-million dollar budgets that are doing things the right way, fully insured. We have location managers, not only locally, but that also work on the films directly that we try to do as much neighborhood outreach as we can. You know, we've, when we shoot in Sedgwick, we go through their, their homeowners association, wherever it may be, their neighborhood association, and we'd like to do that everywhere that we go. Downtown, I make sure downtown committee, Armory Square Association knows, everyone knows that things are happening. Um, I think this year it may be smart to start to send schedules of film out to those that like to be involved so that um, you can see where we are each day for your own personal knowledge if you feel that traffic may be affected, if weather changes, you know, we, we want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, when it comes Can to I just do a quick, yeah. so I think we should do that, and then you could send it to the <coughs> district counselors particularly. I think that would be great. Yeah, Absolutely. and as long as it stays confidential, that's, you know, because the last thing that we want is more people coming mm -hmm. to where we're shooting. Um, it's one thing where we're, if we're in Sedgwick or we're at a house and neighbors come and watch, fine, but you got to be on the sidewalks or on the grass. Franklin and, Square. Or Franklin Square. Okay, all right, what's your address? <laughs> <laughs> um, again, that's not what we wanna have happen to anyone, um, especially those people that are helping us out. So neighborhood outreach is important. If police do need to get involved, we have no, the films have no problem paying for police to be there. We've kind of just used our discretion, and in the past I worked with Chief Fowler to, to get his opinion on how he felt the shoot was gonna go, and we'll take their advice, and whoever is working with us now, we're happy to take their guidance and hire who needs to be on set to be on set for an hourly rate that you know, we paid uh, county sheriffs in the past between 40 and $50 an hour to work with us as overtime when needed. So I have a, another question. If, um, is there a reason that it's moved from uh, the permitting um, section division to Department of Public Works? <clears throat> I, I believe the answer to that question would be because it encompasses um, uh, activity in the right of way, which would, um, be authorized by the DPW commissioner. But if you have code code uh, issues, you don't send it to codes to permit. Really Again, the permit would be routed to a number of departments. The final sign-off in the right-of-way is uh, DPW. So he's the, Jeremy is the ultimate arbiter of these, but there's a lot of input from other departments. And the central permit office as that central location is just the intake and, and outtake place form. So he's, he's signing the, the, the the commissioner signs is the last one to sign, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, but it's, if it, the all the work and everything is done in the permit bill. The routing uh, for all liability waivers, um, not just the film permit, is done through the central permit office. Yes. How's it done now? The, with, this not, not 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 with the other permits. That's how it's done now, correct? Yes. Yes, yes. and we route it using our our permit software, um, IPS, and just to touch on what Nora's saying, the reviewers. Um, with this uh, film permit application would include city planning, police department, neighborhood and business development, uh, DPW, fire prevention bureau, engineering, uh, the central permit office, parks for special events, um, other DPW, um, traffic control and transportation. So it would really encompass anybody who needs to re review these applications to make sure that we're covered and uh, looking at anything that needs to be addressed. I, I just didn't want to take on another bureaucracy if because it says that the DPW is the, instead of the permit bureau, the location was. Yeah, this is, a, this is just an addendum to essentially an existing process with the liability waivers for the work in the right of way. Um, so it's the same process that those go through with additional requested information um, because of the different nature of the work that's happening in the right of way. And, and the bonding is the same in this? In all, the is insurance requirements are, will be the same. There is a provision in there. Sorry, just it one other thing. More, it could be more given if you want to flip cars, cars and, yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the baseline provision is the same as the existing liability waivers. We'll flip all the cars on county property. 
please do. <laughs> I just want to add another comment to the good thing about it going through the central permit office. A lot of times, like if one of the different departments put the application on hold for a reason where, um, for example, like police, if they feel like they need to be there monitoring it, we actually would get that notification in and we would contact the applicant and let them know that they need to contact, you know, police, you know, in addition to them actually seeing the comments. Okay. So that's also very helpful too. Yeah. Um, oh, just. I mean, obviously, uh, it's, it's great that we've got a film industry here now, and that you know, there's a, it's necessary to put together a, a specific permit for it. But just going forward in the future, I, I'd just be curious to see if this is something, that, like to Councilor Green's point, that we could work with the county and other municipalities and just try and streamline it and just have one universal form that would be able to be used. I guess. I mean, is that is that something going forward I, that we would be able to do? I'm not sure that ever could be a possibility due to the fact that we would be reviewing this proposal or, or the proposed filming work in our own right of way. So I don't think like the county sheriffs or the county parks department is going to review something that we would be reviewing for our own parks or our own streets, uh, you know, our own traffic. I, I don't know. I think the resources would have to be you know, from within our city departments to review what people are proposing to do on, you know, city owned property or city right of way. Um, so, you know, the, the application could be the same and we could work in conjunction with, you know, Visit Syracuse and, and the county to, to have our application out there, but I'm not sure um, anybody else could do a review. Yeah, I wouldn't want the county reviewing our stuff because, you know, Somebody in Elbridge doesn't know a whole lot about Sedgwick or, you know, mm -hmm. Grant Boulevard. So, I get or it. Franklin Square. Or Franklin Square. <laughs> no, they know all about that. That's where they take their prom pictures. <laughs> Can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I, I guess it would just be my, my thought with that is not, not that it would go through the, their permit office, but that there would be almost a universal form that could work for either that way. It would... I, I'm just always sort of looking to make it easiest on getting people here to do things, and and would that make it easier? And I, you know, again, I don't know if that would make it easier for the film industry or whatever, but it would just seem like if we've essentially done very similar things with the form, that we could have almost a universal form that it would just be here's everything presented to either the city or the county, depending on where you wanted to film. Probably mm -hmm. probably depends on what their liabilities are, what mm -hmm. they demand, what the yeah. municipalities demand. But is it, Mr. Vinyl, is this, Eric, is this a uh, pretty much a universal? This is the identical the form that you would Yes, yeah, identical uh, form from, okay. from the county, very similar things. I think the down, maybe down the road, what I, what I think um, uh, we're trying to say is if, if someone brought an application to me, I would know if it's a city street or a county park. And that would just be one universal application. Again, this could be down the road. This is a great first step. I think this is necessary. Um, and I appreciate you guys taking a look at this um, and coming up with it. But, you know, again, down the road, things may change. If we get extremely busy, maybe you guys don't want to deal with all this. It comes through me. I get it to the right municipalities and the right people involved and let me do the work that I'm supposed to do to take it off your shoulders. Any One question. Qu What's the permitting fee? The permit fee is the same as our current liability waiver, which is $50 and includes um, any incurred parking or, you know, any uh, incurred fees like police um, reimbursements. Okay. Is there any benefit to having them, I don't know, do the, do with, with that with the parking, do they list off the vehicles that are going to be parking are they are they paying metered fees or is there some sort of like this is where you can park this is where you can't park with is there any benefit to here we want a list of all the vehicles that are incorporated in it that way it makes it easier than black i think uh, it's blocking off the street it's the lost revenue from blocking off the street right that's what you're I, we usually charge if it's park so if it's if it's paid yes yeah, 1125 per vehicle okay okay once in a while, you'll get something where they're just parking on a regular um, street where there's no parking, but they will. Eric's been pretty good about notifying us um, because you have the odd even parking at times, and that's been an issue Okay. at times. We're in our lot in Franklin Square. No yeah, we're in Franklin Square. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> also the size of the vehicle. Like I, I think yeah. um, Eric and Yolanda have coordinated like, hey, this vehicle is going to take up two spots because of the, the length of the, the size of the vehicle. So they, we would charge, you know, uh, 2250 or whatever. I think my math was correct there. Anything else? Mm -mm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Councilor Hassan.